welcome to the national cio summit my name is harshal desai i am part of editorial team at the banking and finance post magazine i welcome you all for this two day program which is being organized on a virtual platform we are very glad to have a panel of eminent speaker with us i invite uh, i welcome mr amit saxena he is a deputy chief technology officer from state bank of india welcome mr saxena uh, for this panel discussion thank you very much harshal and good afternoon to everybody i look forward to thank a wonderful you. discussion with the co panelists excellent thank you sir i welcome mr sarat chandra he is a chief information officer atl payment uh welcome mr sarat chandra for this panel discussion we are really very glad that you have taken time out from your busy schedule to participate in this panel discussion hi harshal and um, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, for this opportunity it's great to be thank meeting you. amit and uh, venkat thank you sir uh, thank you so much to a good and today. i welcome mr s venkat kumar senior vice president kotak mahindra bank welcome uh mr venkat kumar for this panel discussion uh thanks sarshan and thanks for this opportunity thank you sir so today's subject is how cios are uncovering the digital identity robotic process automation artificial intelligence and chatbots this is the subject for today's panel discussion very interesting subject we all know how banks are leveraging the technologies uh, in a big way to make their uh, processes streamlined and smooth artificial we all know machine learning blockchain computing and robotic process automation is often termed as the game changer technology for financial institution banks have taken this pandemic as an opportunity and looking with the emerging technology provider uh, to make their process smoother this panel will focus on the emerging trend of the banking sector i would first request all the panelists to share their views and their opinion uh, on this subject in in about 2 minutes and after then we'll like to ask individual questions to them so the subject as i said how cios are uncovering the digital identity rpa ai and chatbots and i'll start with saxena deputy chief technology officer at state bank of india to share his views first yeah thank you very much harshal and uh, certainly it's a very interesting subject and what we have been looking at that uh, you know this this whole ai and rpa kind of a thing is a very exciting subject for all the banking institutions because what you during this pandemic time what we have been working on to improve the efficiency of the bank improve the productivity of the people who have been working in the bank and our partners itself we have been working on a ai on a smaller scale as i would say it may be a bigger than any bigger banks itself but Uh, for SBI, it becomes uh, a small step into a right direction. But having said that, we are working on to some of the very exciting AI kind of uh, offering which we already have. But we are enhancing them to give a 360 degree view to a customer experience kind of a thing. Wherein what we understand the banking have changed forever itself. So going forward, it would be uh, the banking industry have to service our customers. So the services would become. on the solicitation basis in place of a customer approaching a bank to for a service itself we are working in that direction we are ready with the few solutions which we have launched as we go forward we will start touching about those subjects itself thank you very much uh so uh, we are seeing uh, a trend where in which customers are adapting to the digital channels faster and in large numbers during this uh, particular duration at the bank side we are looking at leveraging artificial intelligence machine learning rpa to embark on automation and digitalization right now lot of manual processes are getting digitalized and they are made available to the end customer and wherever they want it hence we are able to improve the customer experience at the same time the foundation what we are learning what we are doing it now it's building in lot of resilience and it is also keeping us future ready to serve in masses that that's what we are observing as of today yeah i think uh, this uh, uh, 
technology evolution and uh, the adoption of these technologies in this current COVID context is something that is uh, very interesting to observe. Uh, if you notice, most of these technologies are not necessarily very new technologies. We've had AI, ML uh, around for quite some time. And I think what is happening right now, uh, like uh, um, Mr. Venkat and uh, Amit had pointed out, is that we as a banking industry are learning that our role in the industry, in our community is changing. We used to be a place where customers used to come to us, deposit an important asset, which is the money with us, with the trust that we will manage it safely and we will use it in the right, uh, this thing for the benefit of the customers. Now, that same aspect, customers are able to look at and with the trust that the banks offer, they are now expecting banks to actually transform to say that we are not going to manage only the money of the customers, but understand that what is the customer? What are the customer's needs? Understand when the customer's need is the highest and what is the channel, especially in this age where the number of channels through of delivery of service are so many. If banks are able to understand the need of the customer, understand the uh, time when the customer has that need as, as the maximum and deliver that service to the customer at the right point through the right channel, then we can do a lot more for our customers. And banks, thanks to the industry and uh, the technology innovation that is happening, are starting to look at this as the new frontier of customer service. So it's not about delivering a preset set of products to the customers anymore. Now what the customers expect is that every customer you understand what their customer needs are, what their needs are, when they are going to be uh, most needing it and delivery of those services from the bank at that point, point in time. And hence, usage of these technologies, which have been used in internet firms like Google's and Amazon's and others for a long time, we as the banking industry are adopting and it is amazing to see what all uh, is possible with this. So very exciting times. Um, I think uh, uh, the customer adopt, um, acceptance that banks can provide much more than just a banking service right. is very much there. And we can uh, be able to deliver uh, almost daily customer engagement for our customers using these technologies is very, very much possible. I think we're right. getting into the generation where banks think about it as internet scale banking delivered to customers through multiple channels. Very exciting right. times. Right. Right. Indeed, this is, uh, we all uh, must agree to the fact that banks are probably had started using the latest and advanced technologies uh, uh, already uh, before this pandemic arrived. And uh, uh, we, since we organized a lot of conferences and that's how we came to know that uh, there are, there are a think tank in the country that also believes that we are much ahead than the Western world also when it comes to adopting uh, technologies in our banking sector. Now, uh, my question is, how significant it is to add artificial intelligence to a non-IT, a non-AI or traditional method for banks. Do you think that human intelligence is still needed to spot and fix problems? I'll start with uh, uh, Mr. Saxena. So uh, let me let me say it this way. See, the traditional way of banking, how it is being done. So people want. very much needed uh, that uh, they should know their customer. Having said that, the world is changing. If you see the current generation is an instant gratification kind of a, a generation. My kid is a, she's a teenager going to college and, you know, she, she's looking forward to why I can't get something which uh, other, uh, you know, kind of uh, some of the new fintech companies are able to give. So having said that, and what we said, ki, we are going to build an ecosystem in banking industry, which is going to be making our country as Atmanirbhar Bharat. And you are very correctly in saying that, Harshal, that we are way ahead of uh, other counterparts in the world. We, we have built in a system which has not been experienced by other banking industries across the world itself. And what we look at that this AI kind of a thing is it's an emerging kind of thing. It, I won't say we have reached the maturity stage. 
but it's an emerging kind of a thing. And to just you give you an example, Harshil is a good person. He banks with us, and he has got a, a son or daughter who is going to a you know kind of a, a higher study. We would be offering him a education loan without him asking about it, right? So that's a kind of a basis AI intelligence what we have built in the insights about your transaction and once the boy or girl gets out from a higher study we are going to give him or her a first day drive to his office or her office into a car itself right? that, those are the aspirations which a bank should meet and that's what we are working upon and overall there the ai is needed right so you should know what a customer insight is into so it's a long journey, but we are on the right path to achieve it. Hashal, you are on mute. Hashal, you are on mute. It is indeed a long journey and based on the user experience and uh, you know the advancement in the technology, we of course uh, learn uh, to adapt newer and newer things into our I would like to request Mr. Uh, the same question to Mr. Venkat Kumar, uh, Senior Vice President at Kotak Mahindra Bank also. How do you think that human intelligence is, is still needed to spot and fix problems? Yeah. So if you look at uh, the areas where artificial intelligence is getting leveraged, it has been leveraged in the areas of automation, credit risk, fraud yeah. detection, or enabling critical decisioning or personalization mm -hmm. or conversational banking like chatbots and sometimes yes. even enabling new business opportunities. Right. But if you look at in today's context, each of these initiatives, you have both human intelligence and artificial intelligence working together with a common objective in mind to achieve yes. a common business benefits out of it. And I believe the same thing will continue. They will work together uh, to achieve even more uh, greater results as we go into the future. Right, right. So it is, it is. I mean, if I go research, you know, it was estimated that 85% uh, of uh, the relationship uh, of the customer with with banks uh, will happen without directly interacting with a with a human being. So, Mr. Sarat Chandra, what is your view on this? And uh, I would like to ask: uh, Have we really reached that? Uh, uh, situation where already, uh, if not 85, uh, a good a good percentage of uh, customers have already started uh, interacting with the with the bank uh, through machines and through artificial intelligence. And if we are able to, uh, you know, uh, if we are able to avoid the need uh, of uh, human being to spot and fix problems in the banking system. See, um, banking, uh, especially branch-based banking, uh, if you go back 20, 30 years, um, was all about a personal touch, right? It was about the bank manager or the, some employee of the bank who's managing a customer, understanding what the customer is going through, through their life, through their, well, let's say, business, whatever others would be, and building that one-to-one -one connect with the customer. Uh, there are obviously a lot of stories that we all know where a bank manager who understood the needs of the customer went ahead, helped them, and uh, that customer stays with the bank because they trust that the bank understands them. Now, while that was fine 20 years back, 20, even maybe 15 or uh, 10 years back, where the number of customers that were of uh, service to buy a bank was limited and people could do this on a personal touch. Right now, where we are talking about 130 crore Indians reaching banking and having, especially in the context of what the government is pushing, whether it is Jonathan accounts or Aadhaar and mobile and the various technologies that are currently available where the customers are seeing a huge amount of consumption of not banking, but other services, consumption of OTT services, people are getting used to, like Mr. Saxena said, a instant gratification, right? Now, in that context, as a bank, where previously a bank branch possibly served maybe 2,000, 3,000 people, now we have a bank where we have to serve millions of customers. Now, to be able to serve those millions of customers, but still have that personal connect, which 
indicates to the customer that hey my bank understands me understands my needs and is able to give me what i need at the right time is a very important aspect and that's why i believe that i i look at this as a very important aspect that we should understand the customer their need when they need it and what is the best channel to which they will react to right. for us to be able to do it at scale with millions of customers and millions of opportunities to integrate uh, to interact with the uh, customer ai is very important it is not about being non personal in communication but it is about being so personal that the customer be- believes that we are working with an individual and understand their specific needs it's like those uh, creating a cohort or a category of one and the power of one right uh, for that definitely these technologies are necessary have we reached there if you look at other industries we do see them a lot right i mean uh, at uh, some of these internet companies the message that i get is so tailored to me that i would feel somebody is writing that by hand but that's not necessarily true it's actually automated uh, that technologies are available ai is relatively mature at that stage and uh, from a technology standpoint the maturity is there from an adoption standpoint i think the banking industry is starting to get there and i think uh, that's a very a uh, wonderful state to be in in the next couple of years i would see as being um, as on par from a technology adoption perspective as any other uh, internet company or um, any other industry right. and um, so i am very excited about this right so uh, uh, again to mr sarath chandra only robotic process automation is also uh, you know uh, making inroads to banking system how rpa is different uh, in pivotal and relevant for the banking sector see i think uh, uh, when you need to solve such large number of problems and serve so many millions of customers you can't do everything manually right it has to be automated and yes. that's where i think rpa also plays an important role uh, with the uh, evolution of usage of uh, technologies like ocrs and automation of whatever systems that we have uh, rpa provides a very strong opportunity for uh, banks to automate Uh, here are two manual processes right i i i would like to ask this same question ankit kumar also uh, how they are making the most of process and uh, what are the advantages that they have been able to uh, get uh, through this uh, technology uh, so uh, so if you look at uh, the all the areas which i which we discussed about right uh, for example in case of automation uh, in terms of uh, credit risk analysis as well as in terms of uh, fraud uh, 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 prevention as well as for critical decision making or uh, conversational chatbots right we have uh, leveraged uh, these technologies as we discuss about uh, there are certain areas where that option uh, could have been uh, would have been more in certain yes. areas uh, we are we are building um, what is a solutions around it so that's how it has been but it has been a very promising field uh, in terms of uh, 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 automation especially when you have to uh, uh, scale it up for masses right right uh, coming to mr amit saxena i would of course i want you to in on the robotic process automation and its significance and additionally i'd like to ask whenever we deploy any technology are one of the purpose is of course to reduce the you know the cost on the on the organization so yeah, your views on robotic process automation its significance and how rpa ai chatbots are you know helping banks and institutions to reduce the operational cost right uh, and uh, i would take it in two parts here, sir. one is uh, looking it from the technology perspective that how they sh- are helping us and certainly i would name few areas where they have been very very uh, you know their contribution have been uh, tremendous given the size of a bank of an sbi which have got 421 million customers 761 million account uh, if we have to plan 60% of the country's transaction one way or another crosses sbi right so the first place where we have been trying to touch upon is to have a reconciliation method. right so if the money is not debited or credited to the account how well we can do our robotic process automation we started with a smaller component itself but we are looking at that whole of the reconciliation should be done to a robotic process automation 
that would bring in efficiency and i believe once this would be established that can be we, we always help the pfsi industry to get it implemented all across the spectrum of banks itself that would be very helpful the other place where we are looking at a robotic process automation kind of a process is that you understand the regulatory mechanism what under which the banks are covered etc right you should be able to try finding out what are those processes which automate so that you can have a you know pre hand information the vas the pts etc which you keep on trying to close now and then and somebody if you, they can help you with the robotic process automation va is a vulnerability assessment pt is penetration testing just for everybody to understand on this spectrum of what jargons we are using and we are used to lot use lot of jargons etc right so and those are the places where the rpa would come having said that the second part of your question is how the operational efficiency would be brought in so operational efficiency would brought in from reduction so sbi doesn't work it from an aspect to reduce the number of people who can be because we we our volumes are increasing our business is increasing so we need more and more people and there we use these forums like this wherein we like to invite all the fintechs and startups to come and speak to me and we would look at because we try building all these solution ourselves we can take lot of time and there's some of the very good colleagues uh, from different banks who are also over here they have done a wonderful job in their bank right but for the size of sbi we want some of the solutions which are cutting edge if a fintechs and startups are having those solution we would be very happy to work with them to partner with them to take those solution because it becomes a easier path for me than of trying to build it Uh, given the size of the bank itself, it's not like that we cannot build it, but it helps me to roll out things quicker than and we say so. Right. Thank you very much, Harsh. So, so actually, chat chatbots are the cost cutter. I was reading somewhere chatbots are the real cost cutter and you know best tool to engage customer. Mr. Venkat Kumar uh, would like to understand from you how uh, this is a fact. Is it really so that chatbots have been uh, are able to Uh, help different BFSI and institutions in engaging their customer in a very uh, very uh, uh, proper manner, and at the same time cut the cost also for the banks. Yeah, uh, uh, definitely. For example, in this particular mode, you can ha handle your queries in a self-service kind of a model. Hence, mm -hmm. it helps us to scale better. Uh, when you look at uh, artificial intelligence, right? Uh, maybe a slightly a different perspective. Uh, uh the benefits uh, depends on the kind of use cases where you use the artificial intelligence okay uh, take an example of automation uh, uh you you measure it in terms of productivity improvement or a cost reduction okay but if you look at for a credit uh, analysis potentially how much i can reduce in terms of uh, default or an nps or if you look at fraud how many frauds i can reduce right um, or if it is enabling a new business opportunity it could be in terms of revenue or if you are looking at something like personalization or even for chatbots for the perspective it could be even for you can measure it in terms of a customer experience also mm -hmm. or in terms of decisioning you can look at how much of insights new interesting insights which can help me to improve my business or product out there that is a, a way you can measure right so the benefits uh, can be looked at uh, in in different context in different perspectives uh, depending on the use cases uh, where they are covering it right prevention of fraudulent activities can also be one of the one of the element that should be taken into consideration so i would like to understand this from mr sarath chandra uh, how how you uh, you know relate this with let us uh, uh, artificial intelligence tools how if any case well that you can cite probably can where artificial intelligence or chatbots or through robotic process automation you have been able to uh, uh, you know prevent some some uh, very uh, some very crucial fraudulent activities sure um, see the whole idea of ai and uh, uh, machine learning uh, is basically around the fact that um, while conventionally we've been taking a lot of decisions based on rules 
the rule based uh, fraud management or rule based activities to identify risk and uh, quantify risks in any mode is always something that is going to be behind the fraudsters and others you will never be able to be a step ahead of the fraudsters in a uh, system where you're rule based because the first thing that you're doing in a rule based system is you're observing trends and then applying those rules and because you're manually or otherwise identifying those uh, one of the things that our data science team has worked on and has been able to uh, focus on is the ability to find frauds through machine learning and ai uh, processes so that key uh, if let's say a bank is doing a few million transactions a day a uh, few millions of transactions a day now to be able to identify frauds is extremely critical and one aspect of fraud detection or mitigation is the fact that we find the fraud as quickly as possible there are multiple kinds of frauds that we see right now right we see layering we see money laundering multiple stuff now the most important aspect that any of us have uh, to have in our uh, armor is the ability that we react fast identify quickly and make it more difficult for the money to just go out this can happen only when we are able to identify patterns automatically so we use a lot of machine learning and ai uh, uh, concepts like clustering um, uh, anomaly detections and others so that every transaction as it is happening we are able to identify that and say whether there is a score which can say hey the risk score of that being a tra fraudulent transaction is high and hence we should take some action it could be a simple action which says hey customer we think that this is a fraudulent action can you give us your some other information for authentication it could be as simple as that but uh, those are very important and these are uh, going to happen only when we invest in uh, something like an ai models uh, machine learning and other aspects uh, so yeah. i think in that context uh, technology is the only way that some of these things can be captured as quickly as possible one other place that i think we could also use this and we use it is um, in terms of onboarding frauds mm -hmm. customers who are being onboarded we have a lot of compliance rules that we need to apply so while we apply all those compliance rules according to uh, the regulations of how and when we uh, what kind of customers we want to onboard it is also important for us to do risk scoring and others this risk scoring again if i am able to do that on an ai basis i can do multiple things including like mr venkat mentioned um, identify whether this customer is going to be valuable for us what are whether this customer is something that uh, someone who is going to eventually add more uh, um uh, arpu for our bank uh, what are the areas that this person is uh, needing from us and stuff like that now again all these are things that we use uh, ai and ml to be able to identify all right uh, mr amit saxena uh, we all know uh, how sbi is uh, leveraging the technology with some of the great uh, mobile applications that you have been uh, you have been able to launch in the market and uh, how you are uh, dealing the fraudulent activities uh, prevention uh, with the latest uh, uh, artificial intelligence tools uh, in your banks especially uh, on on the mobile bank uh, mobile applications as well so so we have launched that and you are right from that aspect a uh, couple of years earlier 24 november 2017 we launched a full digital banking platform in the name of you know uh, you only did one right that was a full new technology stack what we have deployed and implemented it was a stack wherein uh, we we have changed the whole customer behavior itself so all journeys on you know start and complete in three step process right so the there's no journey which can go right from onboarding to doing a fund transfer you're not trying to find out all those things having said that and security become a you know kind of a center piece when you are trying to build up these things because these journeys some of these journeys have been built up by the omni channel experience right so you start from one device you go to another device and the journey will still continue right so how to manage the security part of it uh, we uh, we would like to just pass that thing how the nitty gritty of the implementation itself but uh, just to reassure everything we are being considered as the most trusted bank in the country and we have implemented some of the uh, solutions which are the first kind of a solution but they are one of the best solutions all across the world because when we procure something we ensure that 
we would become a standard with respect to that kind of a solution. And we do speak to our fellow CIOs and other places where in a closed door kind of a thing. But having said that, we we rest assured that these are one of the most secure uh, mobile platform or the internet banking platform what we are offering to our customers. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Since fraudulent activities and its detection is an important uh, important uh, thing for any any VFSI institute, I would like to ask the same question to Mr. Venkat Kumar also, that how they correlate artificial intelligence and prevention of fraudulent activities. So, so, if, you look, yeah, so, so if you look at uh, a BFSI segment and leveraging artificial intelligence to contain frauds, right? So hmm. if you look at the identity management, right? Now uh, we have uh, uh, biometrics like yes. uh, facial authentication or voice uh, based authentication. Uh, then we have this uh, behavioral authentication, which is an emerging area. Then, uh, as uh, Sarat pointed out, uh, on the once uh, once a transaction happens, how can I monitor the transactions? How can I uh, look at uh, uh, the anomalies within the transactions in real time to control the frauds? And if you look at on the cyber security space, especially tracking the events, prioritizing the events, which might be uh, related to a network breach and so on, right? So generally, these are the areas where artificial intelligence are getting leveraged um, uh, within the banking space in terms of uh, containing the frauds. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, you uh, mentioned about the facial recognition, right? I was... Uh, reading uh, in newspaper that banks are going to make the most of facial recognition technologies now uh, in in their banks how significant this move will be and how viable this will be, this this move will be uh, in the in the for the banking industry now i would like to request everyone to share their uh, their opinion on this so i'll start with mr amit saxena of, uh, Okay. So let me say this thing. So obviously, uh, Visa Bank of India, the regulator, have approved the video KYC, uh, you know, kind of uh, thing uh, last uh, uh, October, November. Most of the banks have implemented it. So the KYC of a new customer onboarding is being done through a video KYC. So, right? Facial recognition is an integral part of it because you have to do a uh, liveliness check uh, for the video KYC to be done. So, mm -hmm. so having said that, so at least we we are limiting ourselves to that part itself but we have thought of few more things for our senior citizens but as and when we move forward we because senior citizens have to give their life certificate etc on a yearly basis that can be also one of those uh, you know use cases but there is a point of discussion which we are having with the regulator to come upon this, but currently a uh, video KYC is something which is being worked upon and it's live itself. Most of the banks have implemented it. And uh, I believe facial recognition, if you are looking at it from a, uh, it would be there in a non-financial transactions, but uh, I, uh, for, for doing a financial transaction, it looks very good and very, you know, but it has got its, uh, the liveliness check is still a work in progress by most of the companies itself, right? So, you you can have a blur background and can you recognize the face itself so there are multiple use cases which needs to go through a time tested process here they can be taken for a financial uh, you know transaction itself but non financial uh, certainly we are all game for that so that's not a big deal. right thank you mr venkat kumar yeah so so uh, if you look at uh, uh, the frauds in digital space right and typically you'll find more of wishing kind of a fraud right uh, some of the fraudster uh, uh, is able to convince uh, the customer to part away with his credentials and able to perform those uh, financial fraudulent transactions out there now if you look at from that perspective and uh, this is a very good uh, what do you call a technology to to address uh, 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 address that particular problem out there and as I pointed out by Amit uh, 
there are certain challenges with respect to this technology in terms of liveliness, customer experience, and uh, uh, the improvement of the AIML models. And once these are addressed, uh, this could be a promising uh, technology to address uh, wishing kinds of uh, frauds, uh, which are quite larger in numbers. Right. Uh, Mr. Sarachandra, your take on the facial recognition technologies uh, and their uh, significance in the GFSI industry? I think um, I have to agree with um, Amit and uh, Venkat that uh, this is an area that is very interesting. Um, and it is interesting to also see that uh, our regulator, I mean, that's something that I feel very proud of, that our regulator understands technology very well and is able to balance customer uh, trust and customer uh, uh, care, uh, and also leverage best technologies and allow us as a community to use these best technologies effectively. Uh, Video KYC, for example, is a very powerful model for us to be able to work with. Uh, the fact that we are able to open um, accounts with a video KYC with a relatively seamless flow. Yes, there are challenges, but it is relatively seamless. It is a very positive thing for us. Also, on top of that, with iris scans and whatever other uh, uh, mechanisms, I think over the next year or year and a half, I would see this technology maturing a lot more and very interesting use cases coming up. Um, so I do think that um, any way of identifying the users and being able to authenticate that this user is who he or she claims to be is a very valuable thing. And uh, the more number of opportunities we have to do that and uh, video being one of the use case, uh, one of the uh, channels or mechanisms, it will add its own value as we go on. Um, as you know, mobile technologies are improving. Uh, even a uh, mid mid end uh, smartphone these days comes with a very, very powerful camera. Uh, mm -hmm. There is decent data uh, availability. So all these are going to be much more possible, even mm -hmm. in uh, three tier three tier four cities. And uh, that, I think, is very exciting. It will open up a lot of opportunities for our customers. Right. All these efforts, all these efforts are being, you know, put together in order to help our customer uh, have a very great experience with, with our banks, right? So customer is the king, and whatever we are doing is for the customer. How do you take uh, customer opinion and customer feedback whenever uh, uh, for going or you know under development uh, application? Do you do, do you do some kind of surveys? Uh, I would I like to request everyone if you have recently undertaken any survey for any particular technology, especially the artificial where the AI is involved uh, within your uh, institutions. I'll start with Mr. Saxena. So uh, I will tell you about and uh, surveys are very constantly done and we engage with a lot of management consulting companies. Uh, once uh, some of the best uh, consulting companies are partners and uh, they give us insight what's happening all across the world and where the world is going. And uh, I would just give you a quick example about and this this we have done prior to the pandemic itself. Right? So it was a bit delayed, but if you see the clock in my hand, right? So this is a payment instrument, right? So it's a tap and go kind of a thing. This we have done prior to the pandemic, we would be launching it in another couple of days. So you do not need to pull out your debit card and you can do a payment. Right? So the regulator have allowed for a 2000 rupees of a transaction, which you can do. So I'm not doing any payment, right? So I'm not touching any card and neither I'm handing over my card. So it's a, it's a, it's a, this kind of a thing, what people aspire to, right? They are, they are, this we have tied up with one of the leading, uh, you know, uh, this manufacturer of uh, uh, this uh, watches and uh, he would be providing it. It would be made available on a online marketplace, which is hosted by Yono itself on Amazon, etc. So you can use it. Having said that, what what you would also see is that uh, uh, nowadays what people are looking at, uh, and you do not need a survey for that. Right? You, they want that somebody has to uh, fulfill my needs. It's so, right. Well, who have been trying to, I would give you an example that Herschel and nowadays you are not traveling, but you may be traveling a lot and you know, and they have been coming to the country and uh, every time you are tired, it's a overnight flight, 12 hours, 13 hours and you know, what we are trying to do next time when you walk in, we'll give you a foot massage free of cost. That's only for Herschel, they said, right? On an international airport because 
uh, you are a good customer, you have been paying, uh, you have, we have forgotten to recognize the customer who have been doing all payments on time, right? They have been a constant customer. So that kind of a service is what we are looking at uh, going forward. And uh, we, we are ready to move into that direction. And as I said earlier, BFSI is going to change itself. There's a host of services which you would start seeing coming from banks and especially from State Bank of India, right? Wherein we are a young bank of 211 years young, right? So we are, a lot of people have got aspirations that what SBI can provide to them. And we are ready to give that gratification what they are looking out from the SBI itself. Right, right. So Mr. Venkat Kumar, what are your views on, uh, you know, analyzing the customer experience with the uh, for the technologies that you are using uh, in your banks and uh, what are the areas that you that your customer probably would like to see uh, some modifications if you can brief so, us on this yeah so so if uh, so we operate in kind of like a center of excellence kind of a model right so if you look at artificial intelligence itself has wide varieties of technologies can have NLP, speech recognition, energy, computer visions, and so on. So we look at a specific technology and what could be the anchor use case, which, which solves a specific pain point, and we engage the business team. We build a proof of concept. So if it is an employee focusing application, we let the end users use it. If it's a customer based, uh, customer focusing application. So in fact, uh, all employees are also bank customers. So internally we try it out and seek the initial kind of feedback in terms of uh, uh, how the technology as well as the use case and the business objectives, we are able to uh, meet all the expectations. And once we are able to assess it, then we go for a commercial uh, deployment, right? And once I'm able to do for one technology, then I can look for similar such use cases which can be powered by the uh, same technology out there. And, and that's the kind of an approach we are looking at how we could scale across uh, various uh, departments, across various technologies, AML technologies within the organization. Okay, great. How, how Mr. Chandra, you are uh, making the most of uh, uh, customers suggestions and feedback to improve your technologies at Airtel Payment Bank? See, uh, uh, as a product engineering team, uh, we are adopting um, uh, more agile and uh, lean startup kind of uh, processes. The idea being that all the way from our ideation to eventual delivery, we would like to understand who the customer is, what is the target uh, uh, customer's needs, uh, we do small experiments, we do uh, customer surveys, and uh, we do prototyping, we show it to the customers and get feedback uh, very at regular intervals and regular cycles. And we follow this consistently for everything. Any new launch, we typically do a, for a, a small um, experiment group. We take their feedback, we use NPS as typically the way that we get feedback, and we continue that cycle. And every step of our this thing, we try to see what is our customer experience, what are our metrics, customer experience metrics that we uh, are seeing. We also look for uh, feedback from the customer and see how we can improve that. Uh, that's part of our uh, development and uh, deployment cycles. And that's something that we are maturing on. We won't say that we are perfect in giving, uh, following this process, but that's an area that we believe is very critical all the way from ideation to eventual delivery. Um, and then expansion or scaling up of the services to the customers. So we do right. uh, that in a very uh, methodical way. Right, right. Now, now when it comes to development, you know, uh, the regulations are also something we need to consider, and we need to ensure that uh, we cater to the compliance. So this is also one of the important, uh, you know, thing that need to be need to be uh, we need to consider while development any 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 tool. So uh, how do you, how, what are your views on this? How do you ensure that you meet the compliance and how tough it is to meet the compliance and what are the challenges we typically face uh, in all this process? Mr. I'd like to start with you. Mr. Sarachandra. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought you were talking. Yeah. 
um yeah see uh, when we are building any service or any product there are multiple uh, aspects to that the 360 view offer this thing is about how is the customer going to use it there are going to be operational requirements to it there are non functional requirements about performance and others that come in if you look at a non bfsi unregulated uh, uh, company these are typically things what people look at mm. but in a regulated environment i believe that the regulations are very clear um, rbi does a brilliant job of uh, actually uh, uh, clarifying on the requirements and the expectations of uh, what the banking industry has to follow and how can we keep customer at the center uh, of everything that we do so one of the things that we have approached uh, we are a very young bank so a lot of our employees are learning the process learning the under, uh, learning the uh, regulatory environment as we are building stuff so one thing that we have invested in is that our compliance team make sure that as part of every product development that's happening the requirements for compliance are very clearly articulated our risk teams tend to also look at this aspect and articulate those requirements during the development phase itself so as a product engineering team we are actually looking at these from day one and as long as these are well articulated then for the engineering teams it actually becomes a very simple aspect of saying that i have these requirements to satisfy am i satisfying them during my development and when deploying we have the relevant sign offs and others to ensure that all these requirements are being met so just like i would test for functional expectations of a product we are also now starting to look at compliance expectations risk expectations operational exp- expectation of any product that we launch um as a part of the full development process and uh, with the ability to be able to automate a lot of these through automation testing and others it actually becomes a part of a part and parcel of how we build new products uh, we also are uh, looking at uh, something that is called uh, as part of regtech we uh, look at um, uh, a compliance uh, appro- approval engine which is going to look at compliance from day one for every transaction for every activity that is happening in the system so this will be a control mechanism so that the system itself identifies if there any compliance misses if there mm-hmm. is any transaction or customer or any other activity that is happening which is not following the compliance expectations it will uh, uh, give alerts and other stuff so this becomes very uh, part and parcel of everything that we have to do and i believe uh, that's the only way for us in the banking industry to do it and uh, taking it from day one ensures that we can make it part of our part and parcel of our lives right right mr venkat kumar what are your views on meeting how challenging it is to meet the compliances and can artificial intelligence itself tell us how compliant uh, uh, we are uh, whenever we are developing any 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 tool or a, or any application for Uh, so uh, as sarat pointed out uh, any of the solutions development uh, we involve risk and compliance team uh, very early in the process so that ensures that the solution is compliance to uh, regulations and so on uh, in terms of uh, uh, like in, in terms of an industry trend i'll put it across uh, if you're looking at compliance a, a very good use case uh, could be an anti money laundering typically in this particular case you have uh, thousands and uh, lakhs of events are generated based on complex rules and certain events needs a faster scrutiny now artificial intelligence can help you in prioritizing what those events are and what potentially could be uh, false positives and focus on key critical things so that uh, Uh, which needs attention in a town time bound manner gets uh, attended to right right okay great mr amit saxena you so uh, there is uh, let me say it this way there is no shortcut to a compliance uh, you know so you have to do, go to the whole nine yards to be compliant itself right so and because all the banks are subjected to multiple kind of audits itself and so whatever we build it we have to ensure from the start itself that it's completing all the compliance requirement otherwise last moment they are, you know we would be stopped by n number of uh, different crooks itself who look at it from a very you know kind of a detailing part of it so what we do is 
that's that's in a that's in a blood now right so nobody questions if there's a compliance thing so we will ensure that the processes needs to be changed to be compliant they have to be changed there's no if and buts around it so so the groups have been you know kind of uh, very much there are different risk groups and compliant groups who look after these things and we ensure that everything is compliant first of all there's not even a single thing which is non compliant it won't go live that's a period end of a story if you are non compliant forget about it it won't pass my table it won't go through that uh, for a okay itself, right so and having said that certainly there's a huge opportunity because compliance needs a lot of audit right so these audits can be very well managed through a ai based kind of a thing so what sbi have done and this we have not talked a lot but we'll start talking about it we have got a risk score against an application and which is being measured through a multiple inputs which are being collected from a different systems right right from a soc vaps and then you get a score assigned you get into a if you are not into a green zone yeah then you are not good right you you have to be you know into a green zone for your application to be up and running so what we call as the application owners group they have to ensure that their applications lie over there and uh, we have built in a so these rules are based on and we do a bit of a analytics running over this so it's not a manual kind of a thing so nobody has to enter any data that data is collected all across the organization being sourced to multiple ways itself so that way we are using a bit of a, i won't say so we have got a business intelligence group and who define all these and they keep on changing based on the what are the new requirement because uh, the regulator keep on giving new guidelines for the compliance as and when itself on a very regular basis so somebody has to keep on updating those guidelines and to see whether your applications and your uh, they they are compliant and humanly it's not possible so we have put in a way in place where every application has to run through that system and it would tell you the results out it's like uh, you know like uh, checking the vulnerability right so you run a software right like uh, you know about lot of software but this is a in house kind of a thing this is nothing to do with any of a product itself this is a product which i got ipr with sbi sbi people have developed that kind of a thing right uh one more question to you mr amit sekhana because uh, sbi is one of the bank where it has a lot of uh, rural uh, customers also or rural customer yes. base also how how your when you compare your uh, you know the usage of your uh, mobile application uh, probably uh, the artificial intelligence tools how do you see response from the rural population towards your uh, properties when compared to urban population so so what we have done when we have developed this digital platform in yono so it only not only caters to the retail customer of urban kind of a, you know customer or millennial kind of a thing it has got a place where where it falls you know krishi also right so over there we have used artificial intelligence for people who have been having a what we call as a kcc kisan credit card and uh, they have to renew those credit card at a regular interval and uh, what we have done we have put in a machine learning with the integration with the weather system so if there's a impending a uh, cyclone which is coming on the uh, you know kind of a uh, eastern part of the country a notification is being sent to all these agriculture customers saying that why don't you bring in all your gold and submit into a branch and avail a gold loan because you would have you would be needing money because there's an impending cyclone which is coming over there and this gold loan is being given at a two click kind of a thing because behind we have already done all the analysis so it's a pre approved gold loan which people can avail and it's a very hit product with our customer who are associated with agriculture having said that uh, we 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 have not only limited uh, it's a retail application what we are talking about but we have got a, another flavor of you know what we call as a you know global which is uh, doing it for global customers and then we have got a you know corporate which is dealing with you know corporate customer for corporate business for a you know um, cash handling for a scfu which is a supply chain financing unit and so there is a lot different versions of uh, you know kind of you know what we are trying to do and what we are thinking of as we said 
that we are talking of, you know, as an ecosystem wherein it would be making a changes with respect to. So even when you are trying to buy, are people who are related with agriculture, they have to buy a lot of stuff, right? So now if you are, you know, onboarded on, you know, your, uh, you know, Fasal Bima Yojana, which is a government of India initiative, all your, if you are, if you are using it, then you, you do not need to worry, right? They are covering all your, uh, you know, crops under the Fasal Bima Yojana of, uh, launched by GOI. So, so the, to everything, every person have what something of, uh, or other to be handled to a Yono as a platform. We are not, no longer calling it as an, uh, you know, kind of an app itself. We are calling Yono as an ecosystem, which is going to change the customer interaction with the bank itself. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Saxena. So, uh, one last uh, last question for the panel discussion with their concluding remark. I like to ask. So, uh, the, 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 this this is how AI is strengthening the competitiveness of banks. Uh, that is, uh, we all will agree on this. So, I like to request everyone to share uh, their uh, concluding remarks on this uh, particular thing. That how AI is strengthening the competitiveness of banks and what are the area what are the areas that still needs to be you know uh, worked uh, upon uh, in order to improve the customer experience uh, probably if you can share one or two challenges also uh, in implementing all the artificial intelligence tool be it chatbot or robotic process automation so i'll start with mr sarat chandra thanks Arshul. um See, I think definitely this is a technology that has enabled successes in other business um, industries. Um, and I think it is the right time for banks and the BFSI uh, segment to actually pick this up. The ability to use these technologies um, is an amazing capability that we're looking at right now. Uh, because it is going to give us the same capability that you would find in an internet company in delivering such personalized services to any of the customers. And I believe this is the time for internet scale banking. The way an internet company thinks about building products, delivering products and services to customers, this is the era where banks will use the same kind of technologies to deliver this. Now, what are the challenges in being able to do this? The challenges obviously are going to be one, just changing the mindset. How can we start thinking about the customer at an in, as an individual and understand each one of our customer in a single cohort, the power of one that we talk about is something that we all need to start thinking about. Not about, hey, this is a group of customers for whom my product will suffice. Yes. It is not about thinking from the product and saying who's the customer who will use it, but starting to think about every customer, what is the customer's need and can we deliver a service or a product to that customer which is personalized specifically to them. I think that mindset is still not come in. We need to move away from what is benefiting us as a bank or as an organization to how can we benefit the customer? That's mindset I think that industry is still looking at. The second thing that is a challenge is obviously ensuring that we, a uh, lot of times we look at AI and others as opportunities to improve efficiencies. Mm. If you look at chat chatbots, a lot of people look at chatbots as uh, a mechanism to reduce the customer service outreach cost. While that is true, a typical telephone call from a customer might cost, a, uh, 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 reaching a customer call agent might cost anywhere between 10 to 20 rupees. While that is cost, that is not why we should be using a chatbot. We should be looking at a chatbot as a new channel where we can reach the customer and be able to solve them and solve their problems in a much more self-serve mode. And it is just not about using AI. It is not just about using uh, the technology of a chatbot, but thinking about our products all over again and ensuring that we build the products that can be leveraged in this manner very effectively. For example, let us say a transaction offer a customer paid, a, 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 a customer paid for failed for some reason. A lot of times we still in the industry have a situation where the reconciliation happens, the, the merchant settlement happens on a T plus one, we commit to customers saying that you will get a refund in three days or five days or whatever that is. Why do we have to make the customer go through this pain? In fact, here, there is not even a need for a 
uh, chatbot. We see this as a chatbot use case a lot of times, where the customer can enter the transaction ID and then we uh, give the status of that or whatever. Yes. But we know that the customer transaction has failed. So why even wait for a chatbot? Can't we make our systems change in a way that we call out saying, hey, Mr. Herschel, you tried to do this transaction. This is what happened. And we will continue trying to make this payment on your behalf and try it multiple times. If you're able to successfully do it, send back a notification to Herschel saying that, Mr. Herschel, thank you. Sorry for the pain, but this is confirmed. Or if you're not able to confirm that payment, even after, let's say, three, four um, uh, times of retry, possibly we automatically give you a refund without having to wait for a lot of things. This is still not there in the banking industry. And I think that's where we could use a lot of stuff. So it's not about just one technology in a particular space. It is about thinking 360. Yes. The other thing is, um, I think, so there are advantages, there are challenges. But I think I'm very excited, and I think this is where uh, technology plays an important role, right? It is not about just efficiencies. It is actually about understanding the opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. While we can look at all these technologies to improve efficiencies of delivery or operations, I think a bigger cost is opportunity cost. If I'm able to deliver a world-class experience to the customer based on their need, when they need it, through the channel that they need it, then what we can do for our customers is so much more. And the cost savings of just thinking about it as an efficiency cost are going to be overpowered by the opportunity cost of customers coming back to us and giving us more business. So I believe that there are some mindset changes that we have to go through as an industry. But if we are able to get over them, we will be able to do amazing things for our customers. And uh, I think that's a golden age of internet uh, scale banking that we will be able to deliver for our customers. Right. And just one last thing, I think India is, um, Mr. Amit uh, also mentioned this. I think India, both as a, with our regulator, with the technologies that are available and some of us in the industry, uh, is in a wonderful position to serve these 130, mil, uh, 130 crore, uh, 1.3 crore uh, 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 customers and be able to deliver uh, such amazing uh, experiences for the customers. We are among the top countries where banking revolution is changing how we work with systems. And yes. uh, uh, I think this is an amazing uh, uh, place. So yeah. I'm very excited about this. Right. Mr. Venkat Kumar, thank you, Mr. Sarat Chandra. I'll request Mr. Venkat Kumar now uh, how AI is threatening the competitiveness and what are the areas that you see uh, that should be uh, addressed in times to come? Yeah. Uh, so, so if you uh, uh, look at one, uh, we can leverage artificial intelligence with the existing processes, right? A every department, all processes, starting from risk, fraud, automation, personalization, customer experience, so artificial intelligence is like an electricity. It can be part of every processes, right? Also, there are uh, cases where in which it can power from scratch new business opportunities, which may not be possible without an artificial intelligence. Okay, these are like a clear revenue generating opportunities, like a new product or a new segment out there, right? So organization should focus on both these things. Second, when you embark on this journey right then um, uh, this since this technology is evolving right so always you start any initiative with outcome in mind start small and this team should consist of both technology and business teams mm. and business team should also understand or educated about what capabilities these technologies could bring in and mm. work together Always start with a proof of concept or a minimum viable product. Always see, uh, am I able to achieve the end objective? And if I'm successful, then uh, go ahead and commercially launch. And how can I repeat this cycle at a much faster rate? How can I do such many experiments, agile, faster, that kind of a development uh, setup, as well as the knowledge at all levels is critical to make it quite successful in terms of adoption and deployment within an organization. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Venkat Kumar. Mr. Amit Saxena, your 
uh, final take. Right. And uh, Harshal, what, what we say is, and what we are looking at, the thought process that the State Bank of India is, that how well AI we would be leveraging is one part, and which we'll keep on doing with the tools and the technology and the solution which we are available. But we are looking at, a, at more from a disruptive mode also. We are looking of and we are talking of how the artificial intelligence along with the virtual reality can help customer deliver some of the results what they are looking at now not many people are going and looking at the new houses right so and that is a very big segment right so can we look at a solution which can provide a pre-approved loan which is already there for say for example one of the very good known builders and they can do a virtual reality along with the ai integrated to have a loan dispersed by SBI at the click and sitting at their residence itself. So we are thinking it from that, that aspect and giving, and uh, it has been a, a quite a interesting, uh, you know, kind of a interaction with everybody. And I believe it, it has got a lot of potential to do different things as we move forward. That's what my thing is. Right. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, for the wonderful thoughts they have, uh, that you have shared on this uh, on this virtual uh, conclave and this panel discussion. We are grateful to everyone. And uh, indeed, uh, artificial intelligence is uh, something which uh, banks have already been able to leverage uh, to a great extent. And in future, also, uh, Indian banks are going to make the most of these available technologies and. Uh, we all are seeing and reading in newspapers and uh, customers are also proactive and uh, you know it's probably because of the uh, aware customers banks have also got a uh, got a kind of help in developing the tools and uh, technologies for them so uh, once again uh, on behalf of uh, let's techno media private limited the banking and finance post magazine and the national cio summit i thank everyone uh, uh, for participating uh, in this panel discussion. I thank Mr. Deputy Chief Technology Officer at State Bank of India. I thank Mr. Sarat Chandra, Chief Information Officer at Airtel Payment Bank. And I thank Mr. S. Venkat Kumar, Senior Vice President, Kotak Mahindra Bank, for participating in this panel discussion. With this, we formally uh, close the panel discussion here. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arshul. Thanks, everyone.